Hi there, welcome to our channel. I'm Anna, a presentation designer, and today we will learn about three different zoom commands. Summary zoom, section zoom, and slide zoom. Are you ready? Let's start. Here, I have a presentation style with different slide designs to present content in a cool and fun way. Content like section slides, pictures, text, graphics, and charts. We'll take a closer look at them during the video. This style of presentation is the kind that you may want to present to your colleagues or customers. Our main objective here is to create an index or summary slide with a mood board look and feel. You will notice that there are no section breaks made yet. This is important, you'll see why. Let's go to the Insert tab and in the Links group, click on the Zoom button and select the Summary Zoom option from the drop-down menu. Let's check mark slide 2, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, 16, and 19. And click Insert. Great! PowerPoint created a new section before each slide that we chose. This summary slide has a live preview of the first slide of each section. For example, let's go to this slide, which is slide 16, and change the green circle to red. And now let's return to our summary slide and it's updated. The zoom function works in presentation mode, so if we click on the slide we will cover all the section and then return to the index, allowing us to go through another section if we want. Now let's suppose that we already have sections in our document like the ones we have now. If that's the case, we can create a section zoom. Let's see what that's about. I'm gonna right click on the summary section name and select remove section and then delete the slide with the backspace key. Now let's go to slide 1 and in the insert tab in the links group click on the zoom button and select the section zoom option. Choose sections 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then click insert. These previews of sections work just like the ones we had on the summary slide we made earlier. Let's arrange them. I want to make this 3 smaller. Let's go to the Format tab and set a height of 0.9. Great. For the other previews, I'm going to use Slide Zoom. So let's go again to the Zoom button located in the Insert tab and click on Slide Zoom. And now we will select Slides 2, 3, 4, 17, 18, 19, and 21. Finally, click on Insert. Awesome! Now I'm going to arrange them, setting a height again of 0.9 and for each slide I will check more the Return to Zoom option. With this feature, PowerPoint will only showcase the slide selected and then return to our current summary slide. Do you see this arrow appearing? PowerPoint is indicating us what slide or range of slides will be covered before going back to the summary slide. Now let's see how this works on slideshow mode. This one was made with slide zoom, so after displaying it we will return to our zoom slide. Do you see? And this one was made with section zoom, so PowerPoint is running through all the section. And then we're back. There are some other examples, like this one. And we're now at the final part of our video. We will work with a different file, where we aim to create a customer journey in one slide. This design could also work to illustrate a life cycle. Ok, so here we have some text and a few bubbles, but it seems like one of them is missing, which would be the one from this slide. Let's add it. Stay on slide 1 and drag slide 6 from the thumbnails menu into the current slide. This is just like what we saw earlier with slide zoom. It is just a shortcut of how to do it. You can also drag a section and create a section zoom. It's always good to know shortcuts. Okay, moving on. I'm going to decrease the height a little 
Do you see that the background of slide 6 appears here, not letting us see the arrows underneath? Well, to solve that, let's right click on it and select the zoom background option. Now, all the background of the preview disappeared. This will allow us to only see the background of the current slide and only display the elements on the previewed slide. It's time to do some magic with slide 6. We are going to hide the elements so the only thing visible will be the rose bubble. Let's go there and draw a circle big enough to cover the tracker. Remember, go to the insert tab, click on the shapes button and select a circle. Place it on top of the tracker. We want it to have no outline and the fill to be the same as the background. It's camouflaged now in the first slide. Now let's apply an animation to it. Select the circle and in the animation tab, let's open the animation pane and then click on the animation drop down menu. We're gonna choose a fade exit. In the timing group, let's select start with previous. This will make the circle appear when we click on the preview on slideshow. Great. Let's move on with the text. Select the title and the body text, group them with Ctrl G, and move them to the left. We will apply a different animation to it. In the animation drop down menu, let's select the line option located in the motions path group. Now click on the Effect Options button and choose right. If we click on the pointed part of the arrow, the red part, we will see where the text will end up. And I think it should be far more to the right. To know exactly where to place it, I'm going to activate the guides by right clicking anywhere on the background and in the Grid and Guides option, check mark guides. Now, I'm going to place the cursor on top of the red dot and when it turns into a diagonal double-headed arrow, press shift and drag the text so it starts right after the vertical guide located on the left-hand side of the slide. Awesome, now let's deactivate the guides, we don't need them anymore. And in the timing group, select start with previous. And it is ready. Yep, it was that easy. Let's go to slide 1 and see how it looks. Let's start the slideshow. Here's our cycle. The information of each bubble is now being displayed. PowerPoint will follow the order of the original slides. So if we move slide 5 under slide 2, this will happen. I hope you enjoyed learning about the zoom function. You can do really cool stuff with it and create interactive presentations. See you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to level up and give this a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.